Swiggity Swag, what's in the bag? Jay here bringing you guys my review of Pokemon Sun Gold. If you guys didn't already know, the Sun Gold Egglock has ended on the channel. And as with every ROM hack or fan game we play here on the channel, I do a review to tell you guys my thoughts about the game, you know, what I like about the game, what I dislike about the game, and my overall opinion on the game. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. If you guys do, don't forget to hit the like button down below to show your support. Let me know what you guys think of Sun Gold down in the comment section below. And also let me know, would you play? Pokemon Sun Gold and if you enjoy the content here on the channel and you like to see more from me please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well but let's just go ahead and jump into this video also keep in mind that this list is opinionated everything in this video is my personal opinion so you know if the ROM hat creator just happens to stumble upon this video please don't take anything I say to heart it's just my personal opinion on you know what I experienced through the game and uh, you know yeah, there you go. So starting off with things that I like about the game, one thing I like about the game is that it's Gen 2. I love Generation 2, as you guys already know, it is my favorite generation. It's not really the most story driven uh, generation, but it is my favorite. So I was really I was really excited to play Pokemon Sun Gold because I mean it's a ROM hack of Pokemon Heart Gold, and they kept a lot of Drano scripts in there in terms of you know the, the dialogue and you know some of the Pokemon typings, and some Pokemon got new typings as well, some typings that actually fit them, for example. Gyarados is water dragon in this game. Uh, Milotic is water fairy. Uh, Charizard is fire dragon. Sceptile is grass dragon. Um, you know, there are a lot of Pokemon that got retyped in this game. Not only that, but fairy type has also been added to this game as well, which is also another good thing about this game. Um, they added fairy typing, and uh, it's just really cool just seeing the typing fairy in an older generation game because, as you guys know, fairy type came out in generation six. So I thought that was a really nice touch. Another thing I like about the game is that it's kind of difficult as you guys saw in the egg lock i struggled a little bit because some of the pokemon were just way too strong and i was losing pokemon left and right especially at the beginning of the game uh towards like morty i started losing mad pokemon just out of nowhere because uh, the game would just you know spawn some ridiculous Pokemon or a trainer would have some sort of ridiculous Pokemon that would just destroy you and you know it, it made the game a little bit more difficult and uh, you know I like difficult games sometimes and the last thing I liked about the game is that you had access to a lot of Pokemon now we did an egg lock so I didn't really get to explore and see just how many Pokemon we were able to capture but just from encountering the Pokemon I saw like a squirtle you know in the grass you see you know just starters you would just be able to catch so many different Pokemon and I thought that was really cool as well uh, obviously you're not gonna have access to like legendaries and stuff in the wild but um, excuse me all the encounters were randomized so you can get really any Pokemon outside of legendaries and it was just really really cool just seeing a squirtle in the grass that you're able to capture is just that's just amazing in my opinion so this one is like kind of it sits in between the good and the bad and I, I don't really know how I feel about this randomized gems now the gym leaders if you guys watch the series the gym leaders didn't have just their strict you know type being Pokemon for example like Falconer didn't necessarily have flying type Pokemon he had I mean he had a Butterfree but he had like a Pikachu a Bulbasaur or something he had Pokemon that countered you know flying types counters for example like he had I think he, I think he had a Bulbasaur I think he had a grass type or something like that and that counters rock types which you would normally bring a rock type or an electric type to you know to face, uh, face falconer and i mean pikachu with lightning rod yada 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 and he, like bulbasaur uh you know the handle the grass types and you know things like that i i, I like that part but then at the same time it was just kind of like i feel like there are flying type pokemon that could do this this job perfectly you didn't really need to change up you know the entire formula like you know falconer not having flying type pokemon that's kind of weird like him having a pikachu it didn't really make sense to me like it, it makes sense in a sense that they were trying to counter you know the gym leaders counters but then at the same time it didn't make sense to me because it's like i honestly feel like you could have just given you know let's say for example Drano. Drano gave a swablu solar beam you know it was like power herb solar beam and it's like you know no, no one would ever think of that except for Driano but he he thought of it and that was his way of handling rock type Pokemon and I felt like you know the the ROM hack creator didn't really need to mess with 
you know that formula they should just kept uh, you know Falconer with flying types you know Bugsy with the bug types and you know Whitney with her normal types and things like that like Morty had a Torterra now I'm not really sure why he had a Torterra I mean what is ghost weak against ghost dark I mean I mean if he I mean if he has Gengar or Haunter then they're weak to psychic as well and then I, I don't know like I don't know what Torterra is supposed to really do it was really weird but I really don't know how I feel about the randomized gems. Like it was good because I understand where they're coming from because it counters your it counters your counters, but it just it messed with the formula and I don't really like that. So and that's why it's in like a middle ground because like I like it but I also don't like it. So moving on to what I don't like about the game, and if you guys watched the LP, you guys already know there are a lot of things that I am not too fond of in this ROM hack and the first one is that this game is completely different from his counterpart. His counterpart is Moon Silver. This game is 100% different. Well, I wouldn't say 100% different, but the differences in the games is, is, is really huge. It's really huge because it's one of those things where it's like, I wish, personally, I wish I played Moon Silver. I play Sun Gold because I love Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh is my favorite of the two between Ho-Oh and Lugia, so I play Sun Gold. Little did I realize that Sun Gold is completely different from Moon Silver, and Moon Silver is the superior one of the two. Now, they do say this on the Poke Community website, but I they also said that they kept the Drano changes in the game, so I was like, Oh, okay and then like I go into the game and I can't you know use trade evolutions because you can't use the item like you're supposed to be able to in Drianna ROM hacks and you know and but in Moon Silver you can do that because it has all the Drianna's uh, changes in it so I don't know it's just really weird how you'll ma you make two games two games that are supposed to be the same you make them two completely different and it just doesn't make any sense to me so going on about you know not keeping the Drano changes, this game just didn't really keep the uh, changes with uh, with Drano. Um, they had a lot of dialogue with Drano, but none of there were no changes really. It was just a normal Heart Gold game with it was just it was a randomized Heart Gold with a new, with a new type chart and like uh, Pokemon being retyped as something else. And that's all it was really. So I don't know. It just it was just really really weird seeing Drano's text because you know when you would know when he edited the text because it's like wait that didn't even happen that didn't even happen so what is up with this text it shouldn't even be here so I don't know that was just really really weird to me and then elaborating on unable to use trade evos or unable to evolve trade evolution pokemon as you guys saw in the lp i had gotten several trade evolution pokemon i had an abra i had an uh an elkid i had a horsey things like that uh riperior or rhyhorn and you know no, those pokemon are trade evolution pokemon well in sun gold you can't just use the item like you can in moon silver or in sacred gold and storm silver so like you get to like maybe a cedra you're stuck there unless you pokey gin in a kingdra which is what we had to do uh if you get an electabuzz you're stuck at electabuzz until you pokey gin in an electivire and just things like that and it's like i feel like i feel like when it comes to any kind of rom hack in my personal opinion i feel like you should just take out trade evolutions all together i mean like all together and like just just take them all out just take them all out and just be able to either use the item or like evolve the pokemon by level up something like that but you know just not having trade evolutions in the game was really really big especially for a rom hack because it's like you can change that and then you didn't change it that's really weird to me that doesn't make any sense Another thing I didn't like about the game, now this is one thing that, you know, the Johto games sort of suffer from, is that there are no really, there are no good grinding spots. The only way you can grind is if you go back to the Elite Four or you go to Victory Road. And the thing about Victory Road is that they cap at like level 32 or something like that. So you might be level 60 and you're trying to grind levels, so you have to go and use an experience code just to get those experience points and level up faster so then you're not sitting here for like five hours grinding up one pokemon you know so uh but again this is this is not really 
this spe uh, specific ROM hacks problem. It's really just any Johto ROM hack. Um, I mean, they could have adjusted the levels, especially of the Kanto Pokemon, because I was in Kanto and I was encountering Pokemon at like level 10, and I'm just like, this is really bad. Like, this is really bad. They could have at least just made the wild Pokemon like level 40, level 50, something like that, because or not not even level 50 maybe level 40 you know something like that because when you get to uh, when you get to kanto you're already in your 50s or 60s perhaps you're already there so it, it, it's not hard to just scale like upscale the levels of the pokemon i mean especially since the pokemon are randomized anyway you can just upscale the level of the Pokemon and you'll be good to go. You'll have nice grinding spots. You won't be, you know, battling a level 10 Pokemon with your level 60 Pokemon. And, you know, everything will be good. But uh, they didn't do that in this ROM hack, which is really, really unfortunate. So uh, this ROM hack definitely suffered from, you know, bad grinding spots. Another thing I didn't really like about the game was that the Pokétech... Oh, gosh, I can't speak. Wow. <laughs> the Pokédex was broken. Um, obviously, we don't really use the Pokédex a whole lot, but the thing is, though, is, you know, many, many times when I was playing through the game, I would click on the Pokédex, and the entire game crashed. And that's not supposed to happen. So, it, re it really does suck. It's, like, like I said, we don't use the Pokédex, but if you accidentally click on the Pokédex, you have to restart, you know, from where you last saved. And that is not a good thing. And I, believe me, I had to do that plenty of times. That's why you saw me save stating so many times in the game because there would be times where it's like, I'll click on, you know, the start menu and for whatever reason, my cursor, instead of it being on the Pokemon uh, tab, it's on the Pokedex tab and I just click A mindlessly and boom, my screen goes black and then that's it can't do anything can't do anything else so um i don't know if they fixed it in any kind of patch or whatever but you know this this the game that i played had a broken pokedex and i wasn't really a fan of that so there's that another thing i wasn't really too fond of in the game was that they changed the evolution levels of starters and other pokemon so in this game the starters evolve at level 25 and then again at level 46 and then when they evolve at level 46 i noticed that some of them go down two levels to 44 and i think that's really bad especially for starters because one they're your starter and then two well if you have to wait till level 46 to get the final evo you're probably going to stumble upon a better pokemon that is probably closer to evolving than your starter and then you're just going to ditch your starter because well you don't want to wait until level 46 to evolve your starter not only that but the game even broke its own rule because like i said morty had a level 30 torterra he had a torterra it was level 30. according to this game's rules that torterra shouldn't even be a torterra like honestly it shouldn't even be a Torterra at all. You know, no matter what rules you go by, no matter what rule, if you go by, you know, the normal Pokemon games rules or you go by Sun Gold's rules, that it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been a Torterra. It should have been a Grotto because they evolve at level 25, then 46. So how you, how do you have a level 30 Torterra? But like I said, I think it was just really, really bad that they like upscaled the level of the evolution for the starters because then you're going to find Pokemon that are just better equipped. And it's like, well, I don't want to wait till level 46 to evolve my starter. So I'm just going to box my starter and use this other Pokemon instead and that's generally what happens another thing that I wasn't really too fond of in the game was that the Kanto badges or the Kanto gems were like leveled as if you have to go through them in order so you go Brock Misty Surge Erica Janine Sabrina etc etc but when you travel through the region you're traveling through the region as if you know you're playing through regular heart gold so you know you'll go and you'll go on the SSN and you'll hit Vermilion City. And because, because you know, Diglett's Cave is blocked by the Snorlax, you have to go fight Surge, and then you can go and fight Sabrina, and then Erica, Janine, then Misty, Brock, and then whatever, right? But their levels weren't in that order, though. Their levels were in the order as if you were playing a Drayano game, and you would go through Brock first, then Missy, then Surge, then Erica, etc., etc., etc. So I just it just felt really weird because you'll enter the region and you'll fight Surge, and then you'll fight Sabrina. Sabrina has like a level 67 Alakazam or something. You're like, 
whoa okay these levels are skyrocketing out of nowhere but then you'll go and fight brock and it's like then you're over leveled for brock but then you, you'll go through viridian forest and then when you hit viridian forest you fight pokemon uh, trainers that have level 75 pokemon so then it's like you go from under level to under level in the span of a route and it didn't even make any sense and it's like wait what it doesn't make any sense at all so that's another thing i didn't like about the game now this one here is probably just me being like really paranoid i don't i don't know what to call it but for whatever reason it just seemed like critical hits did way too much damage i mean you guys saw the death montage i lost so many pokemon to critical hits i lost like well maybe eight out of 20 pokemon to critical hits and it, it was like these crits do so much damage like i could be on par with them and a critical hit just destroys the pokemon no matter what and it's like wow it's crazy it makes zero sense that a critical hit does that much damage now again this is just one of those things where it's like maybe i'm just being maybe, maybe i'm just like hallucinating or something or maybe it's just like you know obviously um i was under level for excuse me a few of the battles but i don't know it just seemed like critical hits did way too much damage in this game at least to me and the last and final thing i did not like about the game was the new type chart now if you guys don't know about the new type chart in this game the creator felt like some typings were overpowered some typings were really bad and so they decided to give them a buff so for example ice types ice is a really bad defensive typing and this is a known fact so what they decided to do was they decided to buff it by um making it to where it resists dragon and you know they just did all this other stuff with all the other typings for example water is now super effective against electric and poison but then in turn you know electric is still super effective against water but now poison is also super effective against water and so is flying so ice gets a buff water gets a huge nerf like it was one of those it was at the it was at the point where i didn't even want a water type in the game because it's like well i well obviously you're not going to send in a water type against an electric type there's just no way why would you do that but it's like when you would normally send in a water type against maybe a flying type because you pack ice beam well you can't do that anymore because flying is now super effective against water and it's like i understand where they're coming from you know like water dilutes chemicals things like that and you know if you put what if you throw water on electronics then it shorts out so it makes sense and then with the flying type being super super effective against water you know fish uh, birds, you know, catch fish and, you know, yada, yada, yada. That makes sense. It just, it, it, it was just one of those things where it's just like, I feel like they shouldn't have done that though, because it, it just made water a really bad typing in this game. Not only that, but they took away steel types immunity to poison. Like I lost a mall while to a crit sludge bomb. That should never happen in any game ever, unless you go for a move that changes my typing otherwise that shouldn't have touched me at all it shouldn't that sludge bomb shouldn't have touched me and it did and that just made it, it was weird it made no sense it's like how does a steel type get hit by a poison move that makes zero sense like we're not in gen 7 with the ability corrosion we're not we're not there yet okay like this is weird and then not only that but then they took away fairy's immunity the dragon is now it just resists dragon so it's like well i can't send in my fairy type on an outrage because i'll still get hit by the outrage it won't do much damage because it's resisted but i still get hit and that is a problem uh there were there were other typings let's say for example okay rock uh rock was no longer weak to water i'm like what which i guess that's like a good thing in disguise considering the fact that a lot of rock pokemon had like quiet weakness to water and now they're only like times too weak to water because they were rock ground but it was really weird oh poison um ground is no was no longer super effective against poison types and i'm just like why like they just like they, they, they just they, they just changed up the type chart so much oh no 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 another thing dragon no longer resisted like grass or whatever so garchomp garchomp was weak to grass and i'm like what how that makes no sense 
like I, you can't switch in a guard chomp on a grass move and i'm just this is it was just really really confusing uh ghost was super effective against dark not dark uh fighting like the type chart just made no sense to me whatsoever it was so backwards and it was like you know i was learning the type chart out as i was going through the game and i was just doing weird thing it was just weird it was it was just really really weird i don't know i didn't like that type chart at all and i know i said the last thing i just said was the last thing but this is the true 100 percent last thing that i don't like about the game because i actually just thought of it now i didn't have it bull uh bulleted on this list don't know why don't know how i skipped this but i was thinking about pokemon moves and it rem it just made me think wait a minute they changed the accuracy on so many moves so many moves that used to have 100 accuracy now had 95 accuracy and then other moves that had 30 accuracy got buffed to having like 95 accuracy or something like that or like 80 or you know 85 accuracy and then they're no longer like oko moves but instead they're you know they just do damage like horn drill was a steel type move but it didn't oko anymore um fissure was no longer an oko move and stuff like that but i just hated the fact that they changed the accuracy accuracy on so many moves for literally no reason there was no reason why you know we needed to change the accuracy of what ice beam if they even changed that there was no need to change the accuracy of 100 accuracy moves it, it just made no sense power up punch uh they put power up punch in this game it doesn't guarantee you it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna boost your attack stat every single turn when in turn it's a, it's supposed to you're supposed to be able to boost your attack every single turn 100 percent. but no it's like an 80 percent chance to boost your attack it's like this weird it makes no sense like they were just messing with these moves and it's like now i can't even go for a 95 accuracy move because there's a five percent chance we can miss and you guys know when it comes to pokemon five percent turns into 35 percent in a heartbeat and you know the one time you need a move to hit it does not hit and it's just like why would you change the accuracy of so many moves and make them worse you know it's like just because like you dropped it by point or you dropped it by five percent you think five percent might not be anything but in pokemon it is a lot because it can make or break a game believe me i i sat and watched a wi-fi battle where one of my friends went for a 95 accuracy move he missed and then lost the game and he was winning it make it it matters it matters a whole lot so i didn't like that they were messing with the accuracy of some of these moves and with that that is pretty much it for uh this review so overall i will say that if you're gonna play sun gold don't play sun gold play moon silver because a lot of the things that bugged me about sun gold aren't in moon silver for example trade evolutions you'll be fine there um it has all the Drano's changes in it you still have to deal with like you know uh the change evolution starter levels things like that you got to deal with um the type chart you still might have to deal with the accuracy of moves as well but you don't have to deal with um i don't know i don't know if you have to deal with the bad grinding spots but you won't deal with the kanto gym thing like i did you won't deal with the uh trade evolution stuff you you'll you i think you'll have a better time playing moon silver than sun gold that is for sure but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, don't forget to hit that like button down below to show your support. In the comment section below, let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Pokemon Sun Gold. Would you play it? Would you not play it? Would you play Moon Silver? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.